Today I'm going to take you through my process of creating a vintage style advertisement poster with letterpress print effects. We'll start by laying out the design with a selection of fonts inspired by the area of wood type, along with some hand-drawn graphic elements using a limited three-color palette. Then I'll show you some useful tricks to simulate the visual traits of old prints with the help of some Photoshop filters and one of my free brush packs. To make the design look like a real handmade letterpress poster, we'll then finish it off with my old paper texture pack, which you can download for free from Spoon Graphics, to add subtle creases, folds and grainy details. A quick browse on Pinterest will soon bring up some inspiration for letterpress posters to help you come up with ideas for the kinds of typefaces, layouts and overall aesthetics that are associated with wood type prints. Here's a few of the designs that inspired my artwork for this retro hot dog ad. Creating an initial sketch can really help you plan out your composition and figure out where you can place the various words and phrases that you want to incorporate into your design. Here's the layout I came up with for my design. Begin by creating a new document in Adobe Photoshop. I'm not creating my artwork for any particular purpose, so I went with a 3000 by 2000 pixel document. But here's where you can specify an exact poster size in inches or millimetres if necessary. I find it's useful to lay out the fonts you're going to be using as individual elements, so they're easily accessible. Create a group for the text elements, then hide it so they're not visible on the canvas. You can activate all the fonts I'm using in this design from the Adobe Fonts Library by following the links in the description. Download my free pack of old paper textures from Spoon Graphics and choose one to use as the background for the artwork. I'm using texture number 4. Go to Select and All followed by Edit and Copy. Close the file and paste the texture into the main document. Use the Command and T shortcut or Ctrl and T on Windows for Transform then rotate the texture to fit the canvas. Hold shift to constrain the angle to 90 degrees. We don't want the paper texture to be quite so intense, so go to image adjustments and hue and saturation. Click colorize, then find a pale yellowy hue of around 43. Increase the saturation to around 76, then up the lightness to 45. To create guides around the edge of the design to line the elements up to, first select all with command and A. Then select the Marquee tool and right click and choose Transform Selection. Right click on the values in the top toolbar and change the measurements to pixels. Then hold Shift and decrease the width value with the downward cursor key, 10 pixels at a time to make 150 pixels. Decrease the height by the same amount, then drag guides into place. If your rulers aren't visible, hit Command and R to display them, and make sure you have Snap enabled from under the View menu to easily line up the guides. Go to Select and Deselect to remove the selection. Add a new layer, then activate the rounded rectangle tool. Set the corner radius to 50 pixels. Click the foreground colour block to set up the first hue of our three colour palette. Find a bright yellowy orange of around the FF9F22 hex value. Draw a long rectangle across the top of the canvas, corresponding to the new guide. Make it around 200 pixels in height. Quickly create a new text element with the font you want by duplicating the layer from the fonts group with the command and J shortcut. Drag it out of the group to the top of the layer stack. Edit the wording, then set the fill to hue number 2 from the colour palette, which is a bright red of CC0000. Scale and position the text centrally within the yellow banner. This scriptorama font is a bit too upright for my liking so a quick skew adjustment under the transform command gave it a little tilt. Star shapes seem to be popular graphics in existing wood type posters to fill out space within the design. Choose the custom shape tool and find the star preset in the toolbar. Hold shift while drawing the shape to keep it proportional and hold spacebar to move it around before releasing the mouse. Switch back to the move tool, then hold alt and drag to create a duplicate of the star graphic. Create three in a row, then shift and click to select them all and evenly distribute the spacing using the align buttons in the top toolbar. Go to layer and merge layers to combine all three shapes into one layer before alt and dragging a copy for the other side. Merge these two sets of three stars using the same menu option or the command and E shortcut. They can all now be aligned centrally by adding the yellow banner to the selection and hitting the horizontal align centers button. Make a copy of another text element to compose the next portion of the design. 
This time I'm using the nice wide cult font to set the word delicious to the full width of the guides. I drop the same red colour for its fill and nudge it into place. The next text element makes use of the Casey bold script font for the word hot dogs. Place the cursor between the words and use the alt and left cursor key to adjust the kerning to close the gap between the two words. Give this text the third colour from the palette, which is a darker brown of around 511717. The rest of the artwork will be made using either yellow, red or brown. Click the warped text icon in the top toolbar to add a rise effect with a value of 15%. Scale and move the text into place. Don't worry about overlapping the other text slightly, it will add to the overall style, especially when the red elements are shifted out of place with a misregistration effect later. Use the shortcut command and J to make a duplicate of the hot dog text. Select the text and change the fill colour to yellow by sampling it from an existing element. Switch to the move tool then hold shift and nudge the yellow version down and left three times. Drag this layer underneath the brown hot dog text to create a simple drop shadow effect. To create an outlining gap between them, make another duplicate of the text element. This time double click the layer and change the knockout mode to shallow then reduce the fill to zero. Drag this layer underneath the brown text but above the yellow text and nudge it down and left once while holding shift. This knockout effect needs the items to be contained in a group for it to work correctly. So select all three text elements and hit command and G. Add a new layer then set up the foreground color with red. Choose the brush tool then configure the tip to 100% hardness. Adjust the size with the square bracket keys to around 250 pixels or the appropriate girth of your sausage. In the brush settings reduce the spacing to 1% then activate smoothing. Set the smoothing value in the top toolbar to around 60-80% to 80 to make it easier to draw a smooth line. In some empty space draw a curved line to represent your wiener. Use the command and T shortcut for transform if necessary to alter its size or angle then reduce the brush tip down to around 30 pixels. In the brush settings activate shape dynamics and choose pen pressure for the size control. That's if you're using a pen tablet. Otherwise you can try fade or just use thick lines rather than the tapering you can achieve with a pen. Draw a few details at each end using short brush strokes. Adjust your pressure to taper the thickness slightly. Add a layer mask to this layer then paint in some grill lines and other details, which will be erased from the red area when you paint with black within the mask. Create a new layer and switch back to the rounded rectangle tool. Create another box using the same red colour to house more text elements. Drag this layer below the hot dog text to allow the letters to overlap. You'll notice the knockout effect won't work on this red box because it's not in the same group. Drag it in and place it at the bottom. Make a duplicate of the French Clarendon text element in the fonts group and drag it into the same group as the red box. Give it a yellow fill and lay out the words of the next phrase as individual text elements. Begin scaling and positioning the wording to fill its container. I swapped out the font and colour of the all and the words. Usually squashing or stretching fonts is something you should never do, but in this case old wood type prints often do have disproportionately sized lettering. Non-uniformly scaling the elements to fit can add to the vintage style. Continue filling out the design according to our original sketch composition. While we only have three colours to work with, you can use different combinations for the various elements. That's the main artwork complete, but it looks way too clean and digital. Let's apply some effects to give it a vintage print look. First we need to separate all the artwork of each colour onto its own layer. The easiest way to do this in Photoshop is to simply select every item with the magic wand while holding shift. Start with the red elements and don't forget the tiny pieces in the bowls of some letters. Add a new layer and use the alt and backspace shortcut to fill. Deselect with command and D then select all the yellow elements. I drop the colour and fill them on a new layer. Repeat the process with the brown layer. The original artwork layers are no longer needed, since everything is replicated in these flattened colour layers, so group everything else down to the paper background and turn off the visibility. 
Now let's add some Photoshop filters to remove the clean outlines. Starting with the red layer, first convert it to a smart object under filter and convert for smart filters. Next, go to filter, distort and ripple. Choose large from the drop down menu and find an appropriate value that adds subtle irregularities to the outline without going too crazy. 20% works for me. Go to filter, noise and media next. This filter rounds off the corners to simulate an ink bleed effect. But if you go too high, things start to go blurry. Find a value that works for these particular elements. 7 works well. Select the next layer and follow the same process of converting to a smart object then applying the ripple and median filters. The yellow text starts to lose its definition with a high median value, so use 4 for this layer. The larger brown elements can handle a larger median value, so go with 8. Add a layer mask to the first colour layer, then download and install my free grain shader brushes from Spoon Graphics. Choose one of the brushes and dab spots of grain all around the layer to add subtle texturing. If you go too far, you can hit the X key to switch the black and white foreground and background colours around to restore the mask. Repeat the process with the yellow and red layers. One advantage of using brushes is you can choose exactly where you want the texturing to be applied and by how much. This texturing helps to simulate the appearance of the ink coverage applied to the original wood type prints. You can adjust the contrast of the grain by applying a levels adjustment to the layer mask. Moving the midtones slider will lighten or darken the mask to increase or decrease the intensity of the grain texture. Since we have the artwork separated onto different layers, it's really easy to add a misregistered effect by offsetting just the red artwork. Click the layer and nudge it out of place using the move tool, which leaves little gaps around the artwork which really enhances the vintage print look. As a finishing touch, open up another old paper texture from my pack and paste it over the artwork at the top of the layer stack. I'm using texture 4 this time for its folded lines. Set the blending mode to screen then go to image adjustments and desaturate. Bring up the levels under the image and adjustments menu then dramatically darken the texture by dragging the midtone slider all the way to the right. Because this layer is set to the screen blending mode, the dark black areas are made invisible, leaving just the white texture. Adjust the sliders to bring out the creases in additional grain to make your artwork look like an old antique print. The final result is a cool vintage letterpress poster design that captures the visual traits of old wood type prints with the appropriate fonts and design style with a limited colour palette. Processing the artwork with Photoshop filters and brushes helped to give the digital art more of a handmade look. Then the addition of textures really helps to make the design look like a vintage print on real paper. So if you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips or techniques, please give the video a thumbs up to help recommend it to others. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to stick around for more of my videos. And while you're downloading my free resources from Spoon Graphics, be sure to join my mailing list so you don't miss out on all my upcoming content. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.